In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can use Quixel Bridge with Blender, one of the hugest library that we have available. Also, if you have an Epic Games account, you can use all those assets for free, but you cannot redistribute those assets. Anyway, without further ado, let me show how can you install Quixel Bridge on your computer. And to do that is really simple, just go to quixel.com slash bridge and you can click here to download. When the download ends, you just need to double click on the icon so you can install on your computer. Pretty standard stuff. As soon as you have the software installed on your computer, this is the window you're gonna see. The window of the Quixel Asset Library stuff. Now that you have this on your computer, you need to log in with your Epic Games account that will allow you to use all those assets inside that library for free inside of Blender. To do that, you're gonna need to click here in this icon where you can sign in for your account. In my case, I will sign out just to show you something. You can see that I have two options here. I can subscribe and I can sign in. If I click here in subscribe, you can see that I can click here in sign in with Epic Games. And by doing that, I can come here and select several different types of signing methods to start to use Quixel on my computer. So you can see that I have the Epic Games option here and this is the option that you will need. To log in here, you need to use your Epic Games account. Any other type of account won't allow you to use all those assets for free, okay? So I advise you to click here on register and click here to create a completely new Epic Games account if you don't have it. Well, as I do have an account, so I will just log in with my account and now I have access to everything inside of Quixel. But now, you need to download the add-on that will allow you to import stuff from Quixel directly on Blender. You can just click any asset here and this asset will spawn inside of Blender. To do that, you're just gonna need to come here to Edit, Export in Settings, and you need to select here Blender. By doing that, the software will automatically download a version of the add-on that will allow you to import the from Quixel directly on Blender. Now, we need to find where this add-on is saved on your computer. In my opinion, the easiest way to do that is by going here to quixel.com slash plugins and downloading the Blender plugin here, which is the add-on, it's the same thing. But if you did the same process that I just showed you, you can just come here to File, Settings, and come here to this library path, you can find where everything you download from Quixel is saved on your computer. If you come here to Support and Plugins, you will find a folder called Blender, and inside of that folder, you will find the most recent version of the Blender plugin here. But that is a thing here. To use that, you're gonna need to do something pretty off. To do that, you're gonna need to come here to this folder. Blender won't be able to install this file here by itself. You need to click with your right mouse button and click here to add to archive. And now you're gonna need to create something like this, a zip file with the add-on. And then you're gonna click here in OK. And now you will have the same folder, but now it's a zip file. And this zip file will be easy for Blender to read as an add-on. Now is the part that you're gonna go to Blender. You're just gonna need to copy this folder here and inside of Blender, you just need to come here to Add Preference, click here in Add-ons, Install, find the same folder here by copying and pasting here, and then you can just click here and install the add-on. As I have this installed on my computer, I won't do that again. And finally, if you type here in the search bar for Quixel, you can see that I have an Import Export Mega Scans plugin, which is here installed on my computer. Having that on your computer, you will see that if you come here to File, Import, Mega Scans, we have this thing here. You can click here to make sure that Blender now is opening the port that we're gonna use to import things uh, from, from Quixel inside of this instance of Blender, okay? If we have several different instances of Blender, we need to click here to allow the Quixel, the Quixel software to know for what Blender instance the software should import stuff. Finally, coming here on Quixel, if I select an asset that I have on my computer or download some of the free assets of, or something like that, you should be able to just come here and click export. Automatically, what gonna happen is Quixel will start to exporting and finally, you're gonna see export successfully. And inside of Blender, this is exactly what we're gonna see. I will just clear the parent on this thing and you can see that now I have this asset here on my computer. But sometimes 
things won't work properly for you. It's really really common for you to see something like this, an error message for Blender or for Unreal Engine, it's really common. So what you should do is, what happens with me was, as I was using Blender, the port Quixel was asking to use was the port 28888. You should see on your computer if the error is looking for this specifically door and look for the exact number of that door because this will be the number that we're gonna go here in the Quixel options, come here in edit, settings and finally going all the way down here you should type the exact number of that port that Quixel is asking to use to export their assets. As soon as you do that, close Quixel, close Blender, reopen those softwares and try to export things again. Finally, I'll need to warn you about some stuff. For example, here, you can see that those curves are looking pretty fine, but if you come here to the rendered section and see what's going on here, you can see that the material is looking okay, but something's a little bit off in this material. Let me show what's going on. If we come here to the to the options of this object here, you can see that the normal map is connected to the emission strength, which does not make any sense. So we need to plug it in the normal and plug it in the roughness. And now the object is correct. And to fix everything else, you need to press backspace to reset the principal shader. So now this asset is working properly. This is happening because the Quixel add-on is set to an older version of Blender and for the time I'm recording this video, the Quixel team didn't update the add-on for now. So, to fix that, every time you import an asset, you will see that the materials will be completely wrong. So, basically three things will be wrong actually. So, let me show you with another asset. If I click here in export, you will see that if I add a Press Shift A, add a plane here. You will see that when I export a material from Quixel inside of my file, I don't see anything. This is because when we are exporting surface, as is, this is the name Quixel uses inside of his software, we don't see anything. The material will come to Blender library. So I will add a plane here, come here to materials, and you can see that here is the material that I just imported from Quixel inside of Blender. So now the material is here. And you can see that the, this material is completely wrong. It's a grass and it's really reflective. So first step, come to the principal shader and press backspace. This will reset all the options from, pre, from, from the principal shader. Now you just need to take the normal, connect to the normal, take the, the roughness and connect to the roughness. And finally, we're gonna have the correct material. You will see that the same thing will happen for opacity channels. So as soon as I get something that has a opacity channel, things will go wrong as well. For example, here I bring another material. This material is for our manhole. And you can see that everything is completely wrong here. So first thing, reset the principal shader by pressing backspace. After that, let's take the normal map and connect to the normal. And you can see that we have something on the emission and the thing that is in the emission is the opacity. So the opacity comes here to the alpha channel. And finally the rest is just standard stuff, roughness on the roughness and things like that. If you don't see the displacement, you can just come here to the folder and select the displace manually. And you can just connect things like that. If you don't know how to connect this like this, it's just pressing Alt sorry, just press Alt, click and drag with your route, right mouse button. Finally, you can connect your displacement and just remember that the displacement uh, is usually better to use a displacement with a EXR file, something like this. It's a bit heavier, but uh, the quality is better than the PNG files. Here, the displacement on the correct place, and this comes to the height. And obviously, if you want to use some displacement here, you will need some type of subdivision and set your settings from bump only to displacement only. Usually it's good to add a subdivision surface and I can reduce the scale to make this not so weird. Something like this. Finally, I can put it here and you can see that I have a really convincing manhole on my scene. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and click on the notification bell so you won't lose any other video on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, take care.